Usually around this time I'll be telling you that I'm not a huge fan of crossovers and SUVs, but every once in a while a vehicle comes along like this that really changes my mind. Our spotlight is on this 2019 BMW X5 xDrive 50i. This is the new G05 version of BMW's sport activity vehicle. Don't call it an SUV, they don't like that. So this is the newest of the new and it is also very well equipped has the 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 engine, produces 456 horsepower. It's finished in this carbon black metallic M Sport package with a base MSRP of $86,000 Canadian with options, we're looking over 100K. Now this is going to be a very thorough, in-depth review and full tour of this vehicle. So you better buckle up because we are going hardcore with the new BMW X5. Now, I'm not kidding here, this will be a very in-depth episode of Test Drive Spotlight, much like we did when we had the first Volvo, the S90. I wanted to go in depth and really cover everything I could with it. We do have a number of other BMWs booked. I'm supposed to be getting the M850i a little bit later on. That's one of the other new vehicles. So I can, if I miss something, kind of cover there, but because there is so much going on with the X5, we are gonna spend a little bit of time with it. And one of the features I think a lot of people, especially here in Quebec, are gonna be excited about is this. Something that you don't usually get on BMWs is a remote starter. Yeah, ah, push the lock button three times and you're good to go. We don't find this on pretty much any of the other ones. You can get it with the remote key like we saw on the 7 Series and then you push it again three times to turn it off. So this is a big feature I think for a lot of people here, especially if you live in Quebec where it is cold, maybe you park outside, you want to have it warm up a little bit, precondition the climate, you can do that with the G. Now let's go over the features on this vehicle. First of all, you have the M Sport package. You get things like the black roof rails, shadow line exterior trim, which goes around the windows, and the M aerodynamics package on the front, so you get a sportier front end. You also have LED fog lights, which comes on this model, and it would have come with 22-inch style 742M rims, but because we're in winter mode here, BMW does like to put a different set of rims on here. These are 20-inch rims instead of the 22s that you would get, but for the most part, it doesn't really make a difference. The other feature that you get with this, without going into the one package that's optioned on it, are auto dimming mirrors and power folding mirrors. So they will automatically fold in when you lock the car. And it also has a proximity sensor. So as you walk away, it'll automatically lock and it'll automatically unlock as you come up to it. Now there's one package on this, really. You don't need a whole lot more. I'm really impressed. This is one of the very few luxury cars that we've tested where you don't need to really load it up because they have essentially one option and one trim that gets everything done. So this has a $16,000 package. BMW calls it the Premium Excellence Package on top of what would come before the Premium Enhanced and then the Premium Essentials. The Excellence certainly sounds a lot better. You get a lot of stuff on the inside and outside. We'll talk about the outside stuff first, jump around the back, and then I'll continue what you get for $16,000 on the inside. But you do get BMW's laser light headlights, the BMW M adaptive suspension, parking assistant with the 360 degree surround view cameras. Quality is very good on it. You have parking sensors front and back, soft closing doors, comfort access, as I mentioned, evasion assist, lane keep assistant, front cross traffic alert, steering and lane control, and active cruise control with stop and go. So a lot of that stuff will be explained a little bit more as we do our road test, but things like the evasion assist will actually help you if you're gonna hit a vehicle. It's not just gonna stop the vehicle, it can actually move you out of the way. Things like steering and lane control, it has a very, very mild, hands-on autonomous driving. It essentially takes what we've seen on a lot of other vehicles, you know, lane keep assist and active cruise control and pairs them together. You have to keep your hands on the wheel and we'll notify you if you're not essentially putting feedback on the wheel as you go, but it might help people. I used it coming here and it wasn't too bad, but there are those things that come for 16 grand. Now let's jump around back. We'll talk about a couple of little features there and then we'll continue that $16,000 package on the inside. From a style perspective, the rear end here gets what I would say the biggest update. I mean, the taillights here have certainly changed. They've kind of darkened the turn signal area here, but it still is more or less core to what BMW's SAVs have been over the last little while. 
but I do like it and it looks better I think on the X5 than it does on the X1. I know the X1 hasn't been updated to the new G code yet but it is very similar to the X3 so we're hoping to get the X3 I think they have the X3 M40i on the fleet here. We are supposed to be getting eventually the X3M. If people are interested in that, we'll hopefully be able to get it. But the back end look is pretty similar. It doesn't really translate the same to their sedans. But honestly, I think it works pretty well. Now, throughout the entire history of the X5 line, it has had a split trunk. So the top portion here will come up. And then you do have a button to be able to lower the bottom part of it. And it slides out too. So you're able to sit on this. There is a button to be able to push this portion back up because god forbid you do it yourself there actually is a button that would allow you to lower the vehicle from here it does have that m adaptive suspension system but it will lower the vehicle so if you do want to sit on it you have a little bit of a bench essentially once it's lowered down so there are some ride height controls we'll talk about that probably more on the road test than anything else but it'll help if you want to load up some stuff you want to get into the back, whatever it may be. You have a dog. You want to get the dog in there a little easier. There are options for that. Now, if you push the button there, it'll close both of them at the same time. Very handy. Something that you might not think about. But it does have a soft close feature as well. So not only is it power, it will slowly close the door, much like it will for the front doors. Again, if you pull the doors closed, they will close on their own. But it is straightforward back here. I like the look of it, especially with the X-Drive 50i version. You have the dual exhaust. It sounds really good. Put it into sport mode sounds even better. I like it. I really do like the look of it. So let's jump inside now. We'll talk about the features there, and then we'll take it on a road test. Now, there is a lot to go over when it comes to the interior of the BMW X5 G05. In fact, there's so much that I filmed this yesterday, and I had to come back today, a day later, because I found out more stuff that I didn't realize I needed to cover. So I will do my best to get everything that I can in this so that we don't have to go over it in, essentially, a wrap-up segment so first of all in here is black extended merino leather it is technically a bmw individual color but it comes with the premium excellence package you have fine line striped brown high gloss wood throughout and walk napa leather on the dashboard so black throughout the interior here not technically my favorite but it does get the job done looks a little bit cleaner for what we're doing here today the big tech stuff happens with the center screen here. iDrive 7.0 is the latest version of BMW's iDrive system. Not only do you have a very elegant home screen that you can have things like your map, phone, and music system there, there's a bunch of different options. If you swipe over, you can see things like your fuel economy, compass, the date, weather, things like that through BMW Connected Services. So there's a lot going on there. Plus, we've always liked BMW's iDrive navigation system. With wireless Apple CarPlay, you do have the option to use it. There's no Android Auto. But even with Apple CarPlay, we've had a couple of issues. First, the wireless charger that's underneath the center console here. When I plug in my iPhone 8 or drop my iPhone 8 onto the wireless charger, it opens up the Apple Pay system. I've also had issues with Bluetooth where I'll be listening to the Bluetooth audio, plays a song, it'll just keep repeating it until I manually skip it. And I can't find the option for the playlist in there. So if you are using your phone for music and you have an iPhone, maybe turn on Apple CarPlay and use Apple CarPlay instead of the essentially core services through iDrive. Maybe it'll be a fix down the road, but that's an issue that I've experienced and other journalists I know who've used other versions of the G05 in other areas. But the important stuff that comes with iDrive, at least as far as I'm concerned, something that we actually are refilming right now, comes with the camera system. You have 360 degree camera, BMW calls it their surround view system. When you have it in park, it'll show you where the doors would essentially open. So if you park next to somebody, you'll have an idea for that. But the important stuff, at least from what I found, if you have the front camera on and you start turning the wheel, the camera will actually not move, but it'll move with your wheels, just like your headlights or the adaptive LED headlights. So what I think it is, is they are using a very wide screen or a very high definition camera and they're cropping it. So when you turn the wheels, it's not actually moving the camera physically, but it does give you a better idea of what's coming. If you're turning left, you'll see a little bit more to the left or turning right. So that only happens to the front back camera doesn't do anything. Side cameras don't do anything either, but it is there. We are going to be talking about the autonomous parking system that will come up after at the end of our driving segment, but that is there. And I also find that the 3D rendering, their augmented reality, is a little bit better than it was on the 7 Series. There are options when you go into the system here to have your parking view, a 3D view, which allows you to pinch your fingers and move around the car. 
much better than we saw on the 7 Series, and that was already pretty good. Then there also is a car wash mode, which is supposed to raise up the suspension and give you an idea of what's going on the front. So if you are on one of those self-propelled car wash systems, it will pull you along and you can see out the front camera without too much issue. So there's a lot of stuff going on just with that. Like I said, iDrive is pretty much all new for this generation. It gives you a little bit more control over what you can see. High quality screen resolution and high quality cameras make it work very well. Now the other thing you get to is BMW's digital gauge cluster. There is nothing left on this that is analog. The only thing that really doesn't move are the eye tracking sensors and the sleep sensor that's essentially in the middle at the top. We see this on the Cadillac CT6 for their super cruise control system, but basically there are infrared cameras and sensors behind there to make sure that if you are maybe dozing off or falling asleep, it will let you know. But the gauge cluster is really nice, high detail again. There is some customization through the board computer button on your instrument cluster stock, and then if you change it into sport mode or eco mode, it will change a little bit how it displays, but for the most part, very good. Head-up display also is color. Doesn't do a whole lot. We do see a little bit more, maybe from some of the competition, but again, works quite well for what it is. Now, there are some things that come with that $16,000 package, the Premium Excellence package. You have comfort front seats up front, which have heat, ventilation, and massage. You have Homelink, a four-zone automatic climate control system with true dual zone up front, where you can change both the direction and fan speed for each occupant, plus the temperature for the actual vents coming out here. You also have BMW's ambient air system that we saw on the 7 Series. It's in the glove box. Very nice system there. You have a panoramic sunroof up top, and then you have the glass crafted clarity system here. So you have a glow in the dark <laughs> shift knob here with the ambient lighting, similar to what we saw in the 7 Series. This glass shifter will also light up as well and looks really cool plus your iDrive controller is different i like it subtle little changes here to give you a little bit more extra luxury on the interior of the x5 now this comes with the harman kardon audio system you can upgrade it to the bowers and wilkins probably a good idea if you're in the market for it for the extra 4900 dollars canadian i believe definitely well worth it but the system on here works quite well now, a quick note about the heated seats. Not only are the seats up here heated, but so are the armrests. And your cup holders have heat and ventilation as well. So if you have a coffee or a soda pop, you can put it in there, turn on those, and keep your beverage either hot or cold, depending on what you want. Now, let's jump into the rear seat area there, talk about a couple of features there, and then we will take it on our performance road test in the BMW X5. Our camera doesn't quite fit as well back here. The doors don't open quite as wide as they do on the front as they do in the back seat area here, but what can you do? Back seat space here is not quite as big as we'll probably see on the BMW X7. We're hoping to get that in a little bit. They don't have it on the fleet just yet, but the 7 is going to be more like a 7 series in terms of rear seat space, plus it will be a three-row SUV. You can get this as three-row, but this is configured with just the two. Now, really, there isn't a whole lot going on back here. With that $16,000 premium excellence package, you basically get the manual side sunshades. You also have a USB-C charger built into the back rests here. Like I said, you have dual zone climate with outboard heated seats. It's not essentially the true tool zone that we usually see. You have one fan speed and one direction for people back here, but it's really not the end of the world. You do have C-pillar vents, as well as the vents in the center and coming from underneath the floor. So there's good circulation back here. And then you also have an armrest in the center. It is a little different. You do have a small storage compartment where the armrest portion is. And then when you open up the actual cup holder portion of it, it'll kind of click into place. So you push it in and then you can put your cups in there, two spots for it. But it's at a good position, locks into place feels pretty good. So there is a little bit of ambient lighting back here as well, more or less just on the back of the seats and a little bit on the doors there. So people back here, they're not going to be as comfortable as they would be with the new X7 coming out. Not too bad overall. For families, great. I mean, seats are still comfortable. Heat is good, but obviously BMW is going to keep some of those really premium features for the X7 because the X7 is just you know, a little bit bigger, not like massively larger. So definitely not people who need that need to be back here need ventilation need massage to upgrade to the x7 but overall not bad at all so now let's take it on the road i know you guys want to see it i love driving it so there's no reason for me not to show you all this stuff because it is a lot of fun so we'll take it on the road now with the new 2019 bmw x5 now i know what you guys want you want the performance stuff first and i am going to give it to you not only does this car have a ton of power for an x5 
Even though it's not the X5M50i or M50D and it's not the X5M, it still sounds really phenomenal. So here's what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna start it up in sport individual mode. Just listen to the way that this thing sounds. I don't think you can quite hear it on the microphone here. Let's jump outside and listen to it from the exhaust. For a non-M car, I think it sounds pretty good. But this thing is supposed to do 4.7 seconds, zero to 100 kilometers. Let's give it a shot. We're in sport individual mode. We've put the car into manual shift mode. So let's give it a try. Ooh, yeah, there we go. 100. Oh, now it's interesting. It doesn't give you that blistering instant performance that we saw in something like even the GMC Sierra Denali. That like threw me back into my seat. But still, I mean, this thing has the power that you want, but it also has all oh, the luxury that you need as well. I mean, now I can put on my heated seats, can put on my heated steering wheel, have my massage going on, and be outstandingly relaxed as I drive along. And I'm gonna put this back into just regular sport mode. I'm not really gonna be shifting it now because I wanna be able to talk to you about how this car performs without really having to look at the tachometer. And I have to say that every time I get into a modern BMW, it just reminds me of how outstanding these cars truly are, not only to drive, but just to sit in. I mean, the seats here are so comfortable. I'm at a great position. The ride on this is really good, and usually we find when you get the M Sport vehicles, you have the M Sport suspension, firms things up a little bit too much to the point where you're not as comfortable as you'd be. Something like the 2015 BMW X3 X-Drive 28D that we featured a little while ago. We've done a couple videos on it. Yeah, you get a little bit firmer suspension feel with it. This one though, it's not quite as bad. And again, if you took maybe the 40i, less power, you didn't have the M Sport, regular suspension, it'd be really smooth, but I'm telling you, this is nice. On highways, it's good even going over some of the rougher roads that we have here in Quebec. I've had literally no problems with it. It is a really fantastic drive. Now going into the corners is just as important and we're going maybe a little bit quicker than we should going through here again it's winter we have winter tires on also the all the nanny systems are fighting against me as i go into those corners but man just hugs those corners and there's a lot of safety tech going on with this I mean, it's keeping you in the lane it has lane keep assist and evasion we talked about that the evasion assist system so if you're going to hit something and it starts telling you there's a vehicle in front of you that you're going to hit and you try to move out of the way it will do it with all the sensors on the car it will help you get into that lane as safely as possible there is a semi-autonomous driving mode as i said basically it just takes the lane keep assist system that we're using anyway with the forward collision warning and that evasion system to help you stay in the lane you can turn it on or off and there's also it's interesting it's the first car i've driven at least that i remember i don't remember it on the g12 7 series but a speed limiter button so if you live somewhere like here right we do have speed limits unlike germany so you push the limit button it'll set the cruise control down to the speed limit that you've set so if you are driving maybe 150 kilometers an hour and you realize oh no i better slow down a little bit you just push the lim button you're good to go but for the most part this is a really nice truck my god man i tell you all the time that i'm not as into the suvs as i am to a sedan but oh i would definitely take this over believe it or not the 7 series i just like the way it looks i like the way it rides and handles you have a little bit of extra ground clearance, even though it doesn't feel that way when you get into it because it is so easy to get in and out of the X5. Plus, you've got the adaptive suspension, so you can change the ride height for whatever you need. Right now, we are in the second from the lowest position because we are in sport mode, and it will change depending on what you're doing. And I gotta say, it is nice. And now, I'm on fire. Heated seats, heated armrests really do warm up real quick, plus the heated steering wheel. And there's so many small details about this that really help to make you realize that something like the Volvo XC90, it was a nice truck. I really liked it. That's why BMW and Mercedes, they really are the top when it comes to these vehicles because it isn't just about having nice features and a nice look. It is the small details like the navigation system. It is supposed to work if I say, hi BMW. 
set the temperature to 21 degrees. I'm setting the temperature on the driver's side to 21 degrees Celsius. Oh, oh yeah. Who needs to actually do anything when you can wait 15 seconds for the computer to do it for you? Now, I mean, it is kind of gimmicky. It does work. I don't know really what commands that you could do if I said, Hi, BMW. Navigate to the closest car wash. Which one of these destinations should I select? <laughs> How about none of them? Please select an entry from the list. Oh, no, I don't want to. I don't think that works. It's very loud, though. I, maybe I have to set the the, the propped volume. It's kind of loud. Hopefully it wasn't too bad for you guys on the audio here. But, yeah, it works. And we talked about that on some of the other vehicles. Volvo has it. You can do it to Mercedes at the Canadian International Auto Show last week. They were really promoting their voice interpretation system on the new, they're not calling it command anymore, it is MBUX, the Mercedes-Benz user experience. It's the same thing, I mean, this is kind of where things are going. Does it work? Yeah, I mean, it's set the temperature. Are you gonna use it? Yeah, probably not, right? <laughs> Who cares? You know, you just do it yourself. It's quicker if I just push this button twice than it is for me to tell the car to do it myself. But it does work, and I mean, we've talked about some of it. I would like to maybe test it a little bit more in depth. You only have a week with it, so I mean, you know, I'll tell you right now, I'm not spending my time talking to this car and getting it to do things for me. I am driving this car during the week that I have it because I really want to use up my time with it as much as I can. I'm just gonna find reasons to waste my time to go out and drive because it is so comfortable and it does look really good. I mean, black on black, not necessarily my favorite color combination. I do like maybe a nice brown on the inside here, but the fact that the exterior is on point, if you had a couple of these in a row, mm -mm, people are gonna think a dictator is coming through town. Now, one of the big changes that BMW has introduced with their new digital cluster is essentially a camera system, much like we saw on the Cadillac CT6, where it's always monitoring what you're doing so that if you are using that semi-autonomous, I don't even wanna call it semi, it's like fractional autonomous driving mode, it will kind of detect if you're not paying attention anymore and it will alert you. It's part of the driver alert system that's also implemented in a lot of vehicles we've seen. A lot of the Mercedes vehicles that we featured a couple of years ago have a driver attention system to make sure that you aren't falling asleep as you're driving along. So there are things like that on this vehicle. Again, it's all safety tech that helps to hopefully reduce fatalities in the road. You know, you really should be paying attention as you're driving along, but I can see how you could definitely doze off in a vehicle like this. It is so comfortable that you don't feel a lot of the road. You almost kind of forget that you're driving along. But then when you put it down into manual shift mode, you are reminded why this is such a fantastic vehicle. Oh, yeah. Now, one thing I pretty much never test is the parking assistant systems and they actually call it a parking assistant so what I think you do is you push the parking sensor button pulls up the cameras and then I've got autonomous parking on there so it's supposed to as I drive by tell you where I can park oh there we go oh I passed it because it's ice so I think I have to go around I'm sure somebody's gonna complain in the comments or oh, you have to use it only in this specific type of situation like cannot be used anywhere else. There we go. Oh, maybe I have to push, I have to accept the fact that if it crashes, it's not BMW's fault, but man, I don't like this at all. Okay, so it's moving slowly. Okay. Now we're gonna move forward. All righty. Now, it's not going in the lines because they are kind of faded. But it is essentially getting me right next to this Honda. Observe surrounding and brake manually if necessary. Well, it, it did it. It did it. Does it put it into park? It puts it into park automatically for you. Well, it was, that was an experience. That was a real experience. So if you want to watch the entire process of us using the self-parking system, 
click the link at the end of the video or in the description we have essentially i guess like 10 minutes of footage of us trying to get this system to work not my favorite but it worked <laughs> not what i would use on ever ever i would never use this system but it's there people might need it so it's so easy to get swept away with a car like this 2019 BMW X5 xDrive 50i with all its luxury, performance, and comfort. While there's still a lot going on for this $102,000 vehicle, we know it isn't perfect, just like any new generation of any vehicle. I strongly suggest checking out a site like Bimmer Post to see what real owners of the G05 are experiencing, and keep in mind that minor issues like we experienced with the Bluetooth audio or connection issues with the BMW connected iPhone app are out there, but should be easily fixed by BMW. Let's run over the fuel economy numbers before jumping into our likes and dislikes. We managed an impressive 11.8 liters per 100 kilometers or 20 US miles per gallon during our 100 kilometer test loop. Now that was in Eco Pro mode with the auto start stop feature enabled. Our real world driving around 500 kilometers has gotten us up to 16.9 liters per 100 kilometers or 14 mpg with a mix of in town and highway driving. Now the rest of that driving has been pretty much done in sport individual mode on the sport transmission. So fuel economy is a little bit higher because of it, but overall it's not bad. By comparison, the 2019 Volvo XC90 T6 with its twin charged inline four did 11.5 liters per 100 kilometers on the test loop. So not bad for a twin turbo V8 monster with this X5. Now for our likes, the exterior design and styling is a strong hit for us, even with that larger kidney grill. Personally, I find this design of the X5 to be the best so far, and pushes BMW's design language in the right direction. It won't be for everybody, as looks are subjective, but I'm game with the future of BMW's SUV lineup with a design like this. Power and performance is also right up there considering this isn't an M performance or true M car. 456 horsepower is plenty for daily use, and that extra M exhaust note sounds like an orchestra of raw, untamed power. Interior comfort hits 7 series levels, despite us naming this episode 5 7th a 7 series. While the front occupants get all the same comfort and tech featured on the G12 M760 Li, the second row suffers with limited tech. There's no doubt this is a seriously comfortable utility vehicle, but it is neutered enough to make the upcoming X7 the true luxury benchmark for BMW. iDrive 7.0 is a great update to our favorite in-car infotainment system. The voice recognition seemed to work well enough, though gimmicky, but the rest of the iDrive experience is blisteringly quick, highly detailed, and fits in with the rest of the car. It's not overly futuristic that it'll feel obsolete in 10 years, but still provides ample processing power to function as a seriously intuitive system. And finally, the two-axle air suspension helps to give this X5 some added comfort and functionality. Parking mode is great for smaller children, while the taller off-road modes still give this true luxury SUV some credibility with the utility vehicle community. You'd almost forget that you're driving on Quebec pothole roads with a suspension this smooth and refined. But the G05X5 isn't perfect. BMW's laser headlights don't seem to provide any benefit during our testing. The models sold in North America are hampered by regulation and require very specific circumstances to activate on top of producing less light than those sold in Europe. On our testing, we couldn't determine whether or not the laser lights were active or not, and overall light performance didn't seem any better than we tested on the Volvo XC90's full LED setup. The full adaptive LED system on this X5 still performed incredibly well, but the laser system didn't cut it for us. We're also concerned by the Qi wireless charging issues we had with our iPhone's NFC chip being activated, and we would like to see a larger HUD with more customization. Finally, the lack of the Sky Lounge, despite it being part of the Premium Excellence package, is a huge disappointment. It is important to remember that BMW is like any other company. Profitability is key, and they know removing this feature won't slow down sales of the X5 for North America while forcing those with the means to lease more up to the X7. At least our European viewers can bask in the luxury of their Sky Lounges. 
Overall, this has been a fantastic week with the BMW X5. They are setting the benchmark for luxury and refinement with this latest generation, and we are excited to see what the X5M has in store for us. We've gone with a slightly different filming approach this time around, so please let us know in the comments if you like this new look for the video quality, and don't forget to let us know what you think about this all new BMW X5.